tuned tonight. I thought uh, we had tremendous fan showing from our fans who uh, showed up, and, and, and there's a lot of them there. I thought uh, I thought the atmosphere was incredible. Anytime you play on the road in the SEC, it is. There's a lot of respect for Texas and their team. A lot of resilience with our team in terms of overcoming many obstacles, uh, including some self-inflicted. Uh, our inability to catch them all is almost comical, but um, I was proud of our guys. You know, nobody really gave us a chance. Everybody doubted us, and I really have felt like we've gotten better over the last three weeks. Um, we played a good football team tonight. They'll, they'll, they'll win some games. Um, and I told our kids coming into the game it was going to be a challenge. Win or lose, we weren't out of it, and uh, that's the case now. We're not in it. So it's one of those things we got to keep getting better. Kirby, it was your 100th win. Just what it mean to be able to celebrate with this guy in such a big venue and such a special night? Yeah, a lot of credit goes to a lot of people. You know, Sam Pittman, Shaney, Dale McGee, Todd Munkin, a lot of players. Mari Lasker and DeAndre Swift here tonight, Baker. I mean, there's just flooded the sidelines, and, and so many other people had an involvement in those 100 wins. It's pretty cool uh, to hit that number because when I started, I thought that was unreachable and um, unattainable. And, and now, you know, in whatever, 10 years, nine years, I don't know how many years it is, we, we, we get there and uh, it's, a, it's a credit to this university and the support we have that we've been able to do that. Kirby, can you take us through the, the reversal of PI, what the official said to you? <laughs> yeah, he he, uh, he just said the guy, the guy got it wrong. Uh, the guy called it on the wrong guy, which it took him a long time to realize that, you know? So it's one of those things that, I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not say, so I, I won't comment because I want to respect the, the wishes of the SEC offers. But I will say that now we've set a precedent that if you throw a bunch of stuff on the field and endanger athletes, that you've got a chance to get your call reversed. And that's unfortunate because to me that's dangerous. That's not what we want. And that's not criticizing officials. That's what happened. How do you feel like your explanation for not a delay? Did they give you an explanation for why there was not a delay penalty when those were thrown? I didn't even ask that. You know, I don't know if it's a warning first or, or what they have in terms of that, but you would think there would be some form of penalty or punishment on the, on the, the team that's responsible for it, but that's, that's beyond me. I don't really know why. You said the wrong, they called it on the wrong guy who was in the right guy? The, the, I guess the offensive guy. You know, it's, it's 11 and 7, two distinct numbers. You know, I don't know in all my coaching career I've ever seen that. Uh, happened that way, and uh, it was pretty unfortunate. Coach, talk about the square kick right uh, coming out of the half, <laughs> yeah. and then the fourth and one decision there on your own end to close the game. Was it a point to be aggressive coming into this football game? Yeah, I mean, they needed two scores, and we could end the game with less than a yard. If I ever get a chance to end the game with less than a yard, then I'm going to count on the offense to do it, just like we did on the touchdown run to create that. I think that's uh, not necessarily aggressive, it's just intelligent. You know, um, what am I going to gain? Maybe 50 yards of field position versus winning the game? We're going to go for it every time. Fourth and one on the road in Texas to win the game. We're, we're, we're going to do it. So the, the kick was, uh, they have a you know, they have a very different alignment, and that was not the, the planned kick. Um, it was unfortunate. Uh, Peyton missed the ball a little bit. That We weren't trying to swift that. What you see out of Dalen tonight? Really strong first half. Well, he did some good things. He also uh, had some plays that he probably wished he, he could have over. You know, uh, he had a pick that I thought should have been a pick six, but he, he caught the ball. So that's a um, that's an accomplishment for us. Um, but he did tackle well. Uh, Schumann helped those guys and did some good things to mix things up and uh, and change some things up defensively that I think helped us. What made you guys so effective pass rush? Quarterback holding the ball, you know. Um, I think you know, the biggest thing was not not knowing what we were in every play and affecting the timing of the routes. Uh, you know, we, we, we got good pass rushers when they can go. The, the bigger factor in the game was the inability to run the ball because we felt like if they could run the ball, we were going to be it's going to be tough if they were able to do that. They really never established the run, and that's what this league is. You know, that's what that's what you got to do in this league because if you can't do that, it makes you more one dimensional. What does Jalen Walker mean to this program? Oh, he's a high character leader. Uh, he was a guy that presented me with the, 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 the football in there after the game, the other twin ball, and 
he's just such a high character kid and uh, high moral value and great family. I mean, you think back to all those wins you get in recruiting and how you really don't know how important they are. And I think back to when he called and told us he was coming, you know, what, what that changed his life towards and what it changed for us. And his dad reached out the other day and said, Remember, y'all done everything you said you were going to do with my son, and I really appreciate you making him a better man. Kirby, how much was it for the defense to come up with a huge night, especially on that night maybe that Carson Beck wasn't having his strongest night? Jay Ray was having a little time. Is that your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't uh, I'm, I'm going to let you say that because I don't. I don't. I'm going to make sure I say the record. I don't agree with that. He had probably eight or nine drops, and you know that's hard on a quarterback psychologically when you start a game. And you have drops. Sometimes it affects you. I'm not saying he played perfect, but I saw a third and four scramble where he put his life and body on the line and made an incredible play. I saw a guy step up in third down, backed up, lost all momentum, and threw a missile to Arian that changed the, the course of the game. I think he played pretty good. But everybody will look at stats, and everybody will look at other things, and they'll have things to say, and we'll keep on playing Carson back. The interceptions, obviously, though. Three games of multiple receptions. He didn't have that last year. Is he doing anything different? Is he pressing a little bit, making worse decisions? No, I don't think so. He had a, you know, he had an errant throw. The guy made a great play on. It's controversial play. Uh, and I don't remember the other one. I'm sure it was number seven. I guess he had three, right? I can't remember the other one, what it was. But I don't think he's doing anything different. You know, we don't have some of the same guys. You know what I mean? He's 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 carrying a lot of that burden. I think the offensive line played really good. I thought we ran the ball well. Um, he, had, he had a lot of drops that, that maybe without the drops, we don't have as many interceptions. Kirby, you mentioned being doubted. Was that the defense? Was that individuals? Who, who was being doubted? Our whole program was being doubted. I mean, did you watch the show this morning? I didn't because I was in meetings, but I got 8,000 texts about it. You know, somebody was doubting us. Maybe it wouldn't y'all, but uh, there's a lot of people doubting our kids. and ability to go on the road and win. Look, we, we, we were able to win this game because of what we had done before this. Like going to Kentucky and playing and going to Alabama and playing, you know, we didn't flinch. You don't flinch when you've been in these, these battles. Did you lose that with your team stuff from this morning? No, I didn't talk to them about it at all. I talked to my team about intent. Our intent was to come here and attack and be aggressive. Everybody has a different intent when they walk on that field. What do you say about Dominic Love? There was a moment, I think, after the third pick, he went around and put all the teammates, like, chins up, and just, just him as a leader and how he's kind of developed since he's been here. Yeah, I love Dom. He's got a great spirit, great kid. He made some big plays for us tonight. Um, he's, he is a great leader. I mean, I didn't see him do that, but I don't, I don't doubt it. We, we have a great core leadership group, and I challenged them on Wednesday to – they needed to step it up. If we were going to do something, they needed to do something. And they couldn't sit back and wait. They've done a great job thus far, but they really haven't affected or impacted enough people. And we talked about execution. What 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 creates good execution? Habits. You know, and, and you only get a chance to do the habits in practice. And I thought the leadership group did a great job with our team this week. You've talked about like cutting it loose and playing with confidence, that kind of stuff. Defensively, do you feel like they cut it loose tonight? And would you say this is I guess, maybe the most complete game you played defensively so far? Yeah. I guess. I mean, it, it felt like we, we, we uh, because of our ability to win the line of scrimmage and uh, stop the run, we were able to play confidently. But we left a thousand plays on the back end, guys. You, know, you, you got to make plays on the back end, and we're we're not finishing plays. That's that's frustrating. Kirby, what's this really saying to all the doubters? I, I don't know. You know, maybe maybe they didn't doubt us. They just believe more in Texas than us. You know, and uh, I think we're, we're a very well respected program, and we've got a really good team, and we played a couple really good halves. We flashed some ability to be really good. We just have to be able to sustain it longer. And look, I know everybody thinks I play that doubter role, all that. I really don't care. I mean, I don't. But after the game, it's a lot easier to say. I don't bring it up to our players. Everybody thinks that we preach. Nobody believes in you. That, that, I mean, our intent was different. Our intent when we walked on that field was completely different. Yeah, there were two touchdowns tonight from Trevor. How big was that for this offense, especially given some of the struggles in the passing game? I thought we threw the ball good. We just didn't always catch it. Uh, but uh, Trevor ran the ball hard, physical, tough. You know, disappointed we couldn't.
close the game off like we should have. And that's not all on him, but he's got to get a yard. Uh, we got to get a yard, and we got to get a yard. What you, uh, what'd you see from Texas two quarterbacks, and did your view of them change on the show? That's hard for me to judge not watching the tape because I don't know if it was protection based, if it was a bad night. Um, I was very concerned coming into the game of extending plays, of scrambling around and throwing the ball downfield, uh, and us not finishing on the quarterback. And I thought we affected the quarterback more in terms of uh, disruption of the balls, knock, knocking the balls out, causing the fumbles, sacks. I mean, all that was good because they were getting in third longs. And if you get teams in third longs, you're going to be pretty successful. I mean, speaking of with two of 15 for Texas tonight on, on uh, third down, it's been a while just to be able to post numbers quite like that. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Two of 15s. The fact, the fact you redirected the game your way when it looked like they were charging back at you. Did, did that tell you something about your team that you had no way of knowing before until they were in that situation? Oh, no, I knew. Yeah. I knew. I knew in Alabama. I knew. It was going to be no flinch. They're not backing down. It doesn't mean that we're going to guarantee a win or anything, but I told you, the, the momentum was gone. Everything was gone. And on third and 12 or third and whatever it was, he steps up and fires one to Aaron over the middle, and it changed. We thought Mike was really aggressive there. He came back with a – Flea flicker play or whatever reverse pass that, 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 that hit for another big play. And once we flipped the field, it was our momentum back. How nice does it feel now to be going into the bye week after Humility is two weeks away. <laughs> <laughs> Got time for one more question? Did you have a conversation with the governor at the end? What did you guys talk about? Uh, he just said a great win. He said, uh, really proud of our team, our program, our university, his university. And he was proud of us. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it.